Well, I'd like to know if you can use yoga to manage your email. Yeah. Wh whether it can reduce your email. I, I actually, well, I, I don't know if you can use yoga to read your emails for you, but I think what you can do is use technology in a positive way. Mm. I was reading an article the other day as to how much uh, workplace stress has increased since the advent of technology. Mm. The idea was it should make it easier for teachers because you can yeah. do your PowerPoints up and you can, you know, manage your time electronically. But therefore, communication becomes instantaneous. And if you get an email from the principal saying, this needs to be done now and lesson plans need to be done here and PS, you now have to fill out all your report cards into a computer system now and it's just crashed. And so it can actually contribute to stress. Mm -hmm. So I actually try and use technology in a good and meditative way. And the way I do that is I, I use the example of diarising in my electronic calendar time for myself. So it's elevated to that status. But I also subscribe to a, a mailing list which sends me meditative or thoughts or extracts from different scriptures that might be useful. And just having one of those pop up in goes, can just instantly remind me, oh, that's right. I don't need to be angry at this person for putting me in this situation. This is actually just my karma. Mm. This is my job in life. That's fine. And if I detach myself from that and see that other person is a conscious entity, then I can manage the situation in a way that's less stressful for me and that is kinder and more compassionate to my colleagues. So um, I guess using technology in a, in, a, in a useful way. I've got a question now about uh, reflection and being reflexive, mm -hmm. um, because it, in, in some situations perhaps uh, where with communications technology, for example, we've got a constant input of information, constantly receiving details about um, how the world is, or how it should be. Does smoking give you cancer? One mm. report says yes, another report says no. In, in a sense, a lot of the ICT that we have now has, ma has made people more reflexive, yes. um, in a sense, but it's not the same type of reflexivity you're talking about in yoga, is it? How, how do you avoid being reflexive, causing stress? Mm. Uh, how, how do you ground yourself uh, whilst not losing perspective by having too much input? Sure. No, I mean, I hear what you're saying. I think the key distinction between the two, two terms, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but to me it seems reflexive is about being more reactive rather than thinking something through. So I think yoga gives you cause to stop and to think and to put things in context. Uh, so I think that's more reflective. I think if you're put in a situation where you're reacting to something immediately and you're reacting from the forces of anger or stress or you're reacting very emotionally, um, and not always rationally. And I think that's being reflexive. It's being reactive to something instead of stopping and saying, well, actually, I have a choice in this situation. I don't necessarily need to be controlled by my anger, by my sleep, by my time poor life. I can choose to be controlled by something else. And that something else I'll be controlled by is the knowledge that I am something other than just this body, other than just this suit. I am a, uh, a conscious entity that has all sources of compassion and strength and, and beauty available to it. And it's just about harnessing that. So I think in a really stressful situation, it's about making that choice. And I think yoga gives you the mental space in which to make that choice. So rather than reacting to something in the immediate sense, yoga gives you cause to sit and take context and say, hey, could I be dealing with this in a different way? Could I be respecting this person's individuality and my own and, and not taking things so personally? Can I, can I not be attached to the situation? Can I look at it objectively? Can I deal with it better? Can I neutralise anger? Can I neutralise stress? Um, can I heal my body by having moment to reflect and not be so stressed and, and um, reacting with such immediacy to things. So the, you, you've talked about a number of questions there. That are mm. they the things that go through your mind when you're sitting under the tree, metaphorically? Um. Yes, and, and when I say they are the things that go through my mind, I think that's something that can be learnt. I don't think that I'm a perfect yogic pr practitioner by any sense of the, me, uh, of the term, but I think it's like having a really good toolbox. If you're trying to, say you've got the, uh, your power box in your house goes out and all the, the, the uh, lights go out, 
oh, what am I going to do? The lights are all out. Oh, gosh, this is a really stressful situation. Oh, no, what am I going to do? I open the box. I don't know how to fix it. Oh, gosh, what am I going to do? Oh, I know. I'll knock that over and do this. And I guess that's metaphorical for how we react in the workplace sometimes when things are coming at us from all different angles. But I've got a toolbox. And oh, what do you know? The toolbox allows me to open that power box and it allows me to, oh, look, I just need to twig that and do this and standing back and, and then the lights come back on again. And that's probably not a very well thought through example. But sometimes it's like that. Without yoga, sometimes you're navigating yourself in the dark. And I guess... It, the example, another example I would use is if you're in a river and the current is going a certain way and all of a sudden you hit a fork in the river where the waters are all coming at you from different ways and you could, could drown. Um, but if you actually choose to look at the situation, you say, well, if I just follow the current of the river down this way and be calm, then I can get out and I won't drown. So it's again, yoga equips you with, with the toolbox and with the moment to think that you can actually go with the current in a peaceful way and not, I guess, drown in a sea of stress, which I think is very easy to do in the workplace. I also think it's about not taking oneself so seriously and personally. So yoga will give you the insight that actually, I'm not a perfect person. I'm not intended to be. I do have my flaws, but that doesn't affect the quality and nature of, of, of me as an entity. So um, if I go into a situation, we're using teachers in, as an example, so I'll, do, I'll use that as an example. I've walked into a room of 100 foreign officials and I'm training them on international law. And I can see in the classroom that perhaps not all of them are reacting to me as, as much as I'd like. Maybe they don't like the way I'm doing it. And we're all vulnerable creatures at the end of the day. Everyone likes to be liked. And so I could take that very personally and feel very upset by that. And imagine if I was a teacher and I was having to turn up to class every day and talk to people and not necessarily have it appreciated or valued, that that would be a real source of stress and it would create anxiety and I guess we all have relevance issues. We all like to feel relevant and, and well liked. But having that background in yoga and practicing yoga in my everyday life makes me less attached to my ego. So I, 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 I guess I just don't need that praise as much as I might, I might have used to. You know, I can only do my best and if people don't necessarily respond to that how I want them to, that's their choice and that's fine. And obviously I'll do my best to try and rectify the situation and be dynamic and flexible and energetic and innovative in order to try and fix the situation and keep things moving. But it gives you that element of detachment and that's fine. You can say that person's got their lessons to learn and I have my lessons to learn and there's some sense of detachment there.